I am on Tinder, by the way. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> now that I learned about Tinder is on the App Store, Tinder is classified as a game. <laughs> That's the case I've been playing on single player mode. <laughs> There's a multiplayer option, but I haven't unlocked that level yet. <laughs> Remember when you were a little kid and you didn't want your little brother to play the video game, so you'd hand him the controller, but it wasn't plugged into anything? <laughs> That's what Tinder's like for me. <laughs> I'm playing, nothing is happening on the other end. <laughs> and I'm like the little brother, I'm like, am I doing this right? <laughs> and Tinder's like, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. <laughs> If you're lucky enough to not know what Tinder is, it's this terrible dating app where you swipe right on pictures of people that you like and you swipe left on pictures of people that you don't like. If you both swipe right on each other, you match. Now, what's been happening with me is I've been matching with people I don't remember swiping right on. And I think I figured out why. You know how people tell you to not go to the grocery store when you're hungry? I've been on Tinder while I'm thirsty. <laughs> and you end up with those same thoughts of regret afterwards. You get that match on your phone like, oh man, I must have been pretty desperate to think this would be good. <laughs> well, waste not. <laughs> so, um, but my wife, uh, I thought she was Irish. I met my wife on the internet. How about that? Eight years ago, we met on the internet. And uh, I'm amazed we're still together because she returns everything she gets online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you like that joke. So we, that's true, we met eight years ago. Now, we didn't know what to tell our parents about the internet dating. It's a little weird for me. It's like a generational thing, you know? We told our parents uh, we met at the University of Phoenix. And I, I just, uh, <laughs> but I've tried using the dating technology. Again, it's, it's not for people my age. It's for, for millennials and so forth. And, and I laugh when people say, well, you know, there are options for uh, middle-aged people who want to meet online. Uh, okay, I've seen the commercials for our time. Right? That's what they call it. It's the dating site for people over 50. It's our time. No, no our time was 1998. <laughs> this is not our, this is overtime. Is what, this is sudden death. This is grab a chair before the music stops time. <laughs> and, and as far as these profiles go, we, we need to pass some legislation about these pictures, okay? Some sort of time date stamping. Just write your congressman, because this is... It's supposed to be a recent picture. I see the Hindenburg explosion in the background. <laughs> And no Snapchat filters, okay? How, a woman's got a crown of animated flowers and little hearts. What, what is she trying to distract me from with all of this fireworks going on in the back? What does she have, some kind of weird mole or a, a goiter, a, a mustache? What's happening here? You... No more of this. Look, there's only, look, it's a dating site. There's only one picture we need to see. It should be required for everyone. And that is you, naked, on a scale, holding a bank statement. That's it. Because <laughs> people are dishonest. And I know it goes both ways, because my female friends tell me that the men online lie about their height. Yes. Which is hilarious, because the whole point is to meet that woman. How do you show up eight inches shorter than you said you were? What? What's the plan? You just keep moving around the whole night so she, she can't get a read on how tall you are? That... It's insane. And I say this as a short guy. I'm not trying to fool anyone, mislead you, create optical illusions. I don't put up pictures of me surrounded by chihuahuas, wearing a top hat and an umbrella, no. I'm honest and I get punished because I tell women, look, I'm 50 and five foot six. They think, eh, he's 73, he's four feet tall. I'm not interested, I, I can't. Right. I am a married man. I am a married man. I've been married for four years to the love of my life. She's great. Like a lot of people, we met online. 
Uh, we didn't meet on any of the big dating websites, though. You know, like eHarmony or Match. We met on a very unconventional dating website, uh, Overstock.com. <laughs> She was a pick of the week. <laughs> and I was reduced for immediate sale. <laughs> a match made in heaven, you know, terrible return policy, that's what she calls me. <laughs> terrible, or late night impulse purchase, terrible return policy. No, so I finally got to the point where I was like, whatever, I'm gonna try a dating app. I was against it for a very long time, but I was like, there's no more fish in the sea. They are all online. Yeah, let's go cast the net there. So I download an app and I just pray, Jesus, make me a fisher of men. And uh, <laughs> that's a Bible joke. Yeah. <laughs> the church seems to make a dating app called Fisher of Men. Somebody, I'm just saying, I thought of that. If you see it one day, you are welcome. Or I'm sorry, whichever one applies. I don't, I don't know. So anyway, so I found a dating app called Coffee Meets Bagel. Anybody ever heard of this one? Okay, yeah, one person. Yeah, my girl. The rest of y'all, let me tell you what you're not missing. <laughs> yeah, okay, so the thing that I liked about Coffee Meets Bagel is that it limited you to only connecting with six people a day, which sounds like a lot. <laughs> but in the dating app world where it's like unlimited swipage of hundreds of people until your eyes are bloodshot, six is self-restraint. Okay? Yeah. Now the weird thing about Coffee Meets Bagel is that it refers to people as bagels. So every day you get a little notification that says, you have six new bagels today. I'm like, I don't want six bagels. I want one grown man. Yeah, preferably with a job. And a beard, a bearded bagel. That's my type. Okay, now the other weird thing about Coffee Meets Bagel is, is you have a bean bank and it charges you beans every time you want to find out something about your bagel. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you have three mutual friends on Facebook with this bagel and I'm like, oh, really? Who? And it's like, that'll be 95 beans, please. <laughs> this is dating in my generation. Yeah, if you're married, stay there. <laughs> All right, hang in there. So one day I was particularly well stocked in the bean department. I noticed this one bagel was looking kind of toasty. Yeah, I was like, oh my word, he's got a job, he's got a beard, he's got it all. He was an everything bagel. <laughs> yeah, think about it. And, uh, <laughs> So we connected and I spent my beans, cost me a bunch, but whatever. And uh, he sends me a message about my profile picture. Cause it was a picture of me holding up the book, dating for dummies. Cause that's what my mother got me for Valentine's day that year. Yeah, wasn't worried at all. And not just any copy, pocket size. <laughs> take it with me on the date, lest we forget. All right, so he sends me a message and he's like, hey, I really like your profile picture. I actually have the same book. What are the odds? And I wrote back and said, well, considering the fact that we're both on a dating app that charges us beans to call each other bagels, I'd say pretty high. Yeah. I did not hear back from him. <laughs> I burned that bagel. Uh. I tend to get like really attached really quickly when I date someone. That's kind of like my go-to move. <laughs> That's my thing. And people always say it's a bad idea. You know, they're like, you know, only fools rush in. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Which is fine, but like, where else do you want me to put my eggs, man? <laughs> right? Where else if not this basket? And do I look like the guy who has like an abundance of other baskets available to him? <laughs> right. 
got to put them somewhere. Have you tried carrying around a bunch of eggs? They just fall everywhere. You have to put them in a basket. Just looking for somewhere to put my eggs. It's actually what my Tinder bio says. It's just... Put those eggs somewhere. <laughs> One of my friends signed me up on a dating site. <laughs> Plentyoffish.com. Yeah, anybody on it? <laughs> no, seriously? Okay. <laughs> Back me up. There are plenty of fish, and they're all bottom feeders. Because um, <laughs> it is. It's all lies and fake photos. I don't know why you do a fake photo. You're going to eventually be found. Don't make me think I'm about to meet Anne Hathaway and I show up and you look like Anne passed away. Okay, can we not? <laughs> but I did. So I, you know, my kids kept encouraging me. And so I did. I, I finally met somebody. Um, how I met her was so weird. Like, oh, I already told you about the prison show. Um, <clears throat> so, no, I just didn't. <laughs> when they marched her in, I was like, that's the one for me. <laughs> The old ball and chain. No, um, <laughs> no, I did. I just feel weird talking about it, how I met her, even though I love her so much. But I met her. I did meet her online. Uh, I met her on MySpace. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was awesome. We were the only two left. Um, <laughs> My mom is trying to date now, which, uh, which is bad. <laughs> She's trying to date online, and uh, you know the internet and my mom—they don't really get along. <laughs> She tried to date online, make an online profile. And uh, when I looked at her profile, uh, it was just a picture of a cat. And uh, yes, we can. That was her whole account. <laughs> she was like, I don't know why anyone's not emailing me. I'm like, nobody wants to hook up with a cat, mom. Why are you? <laughs> this is the first impression you're making. She was like, well, can you help me with my online account? I'm like, yeah, but first you need a picture. Do you have any pictures? She's like, no. I'm like, all right, fine. Me and you, we're going to have a photo shoot. Yeah, me and my mom. Photo shoot. <laughs> it was going well, but halfway through it, I found myself saying things that a son should never say to his mom. <laughs> I was like, ooh, you a bad girl. Go ahead, mom. <laughs> Looking good. Go ahead, show me some shoulder, mom. Give me some shoulder right there. Ooh, you're going to kill him. You're going to have a hot girl summer, mom. That's what you're going to have. Her pictures turned out great. She, uh, we went back home, she uploaded her pictures, and uh, I was like, all right, mom, I'm gonna come back in a week, and we're gonna see what emails you got. And I came back a week later. I'm like, any dates, what's going on? She's like, no, I haven't, I haven't emailed anyone back. I'm like, why not? We, we set up the thirst traps, right? <laughs> all you gotta do is check the bait. What are you doing, mom? She's like, well, English is my second language. I'm not comfortable sending guys emails. Son, can you? <laughs> can you send emails for me? I'm like, Mom, um, with all due respect. Uh, <laughs> Hell no, I'm not going to send no emails for you. Are you crazy? Are you kidding me? What do I look like? She was like, well, we've come this far, please. I'm just trying, I don't want to be alone. I'm like, all right, mom, I'll do this for you, right? So, turns out I'm surprisingly good <laughs> at flirting with 70-year-old men. Like, <laughs> these guys love me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> they like Christy Yamaguchi. I like Christy Yamaguchi. It's like, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> If I'm being honest, I don't think that most of the guys that I matched with were good for my mom. <laughs> I don't. They weren't good enough for her. My mom deserves the best. You guys understand? She deserves the best. And then, I met Harold. <laughs> this angel, Harold, oh my God. He was different. He really was. He was the first guy to ask me about me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> He was really special. I really liked Harold. I talked to Harold for three months for my mom. Stay on course, guys. 
for my mom. Talked to her for three months, and it was he's great, man. Eventually, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I think I found the one. Like, Harold is perfect for us. Like, <laughs> he's great. Uh, d dating nowadays, modern dating with all the technology and stuff. You know, we got Tinder. Who's been on Tinder? <laughs> Just me, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> then these jokes are going to bomb. <laughs> Doing them anyway. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so I'll explain it, I guess. So Tinder is a thing where you kind of like swipe left or right to pick out uh, people in your area that you would like to date. And I, this is just, that's not my demographic. The people, every single girl in there was five foot two and a professional photographer, okay? <laughs> like, and so I, I want to make an app. It's going to be Tinder, but just for tall people. I already got a great name picked out. Going to call it Redwoods. <laughs> None of this swiping left and right crap. You swipe up if they're tall enough. <laughs> and you swipe down if they're too short. Now, both of those options still say yes to the other person because when you're this tall, there's not a lot of options. <laughs> and every time you match with somebody, it just says, Timber! Your standards just fell. <laughs> I dated a girl on Tinder. Real head turner. Like when I tried to kiss her. You don't have to feel sad, I'm married now. <laughs> like, not to uh, a hobbit. Uh, no, I did date a girl that was real short for a while. That was uh, not a fun time. When people start commenting on our pictures and in real life, oh, that's a fun daddy-daughter date. Nope, I'm out. Like, she's like, look, my hand fits in your palm. I didn't need to know that. <laughs> I said, hey, why don't you try online dating? I did it. I tried all, I tried all of them, right? I tried uh, uh, OkCupid, okay eHarmony, Groupon, all of them. <laughs> and I took all these tests about what I want in a woman, right? And took all these tests. And it turns out, like, it gave me, like, my five, five things I'm looking for, which is, uh, which is someone that's patient, kind, good with kids, dresses modestly, and is a hard worker. Woo. Yeah, turns out my perfect woman is Amish. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to find an Amish woman online? <laughs> Through telegraph or something? Be like, no, you hang up. <laughs> I can't do that. So the day my wife left me, uh, I got on Tinder the night she left me. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You are not your best self that night. You need to wait a week before you try to get in Tinder. You're just, you know, putting your, your best foot forward. Uh, oh man, the whole reason that I got on Tinder was because uh, my wife, she already was on Tinder. She had a date uh, set up for that night. And I was like, you're going on a date tonight. You're meeting someone from Tinder tonight. Well, I got news for you, babe. Two can play at this game, but actually no, only one can. <laughs> common misconception uh, in like a, the first 24 hours in the first 24 hour period she got 252 messages sent to her on OkCupid I got reported six times on Tinder <laughs> that was day one <sighs> Aaron how do you know how many messages she got on OkCupid listen when your wife leaves you, two things happen. You have a lot of time on your hands and you hate yourself. So you find yourself thinking things like, I could probably guess her OkCupid okay password. And I was right, I totally could. <laughs> Only took a few hours, but I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> Had nothing to do that night. Uh, don't worry, it gets worse, you guys. <laughs> you ever see your ex on Tinder? Never happened to anybody? 
just me again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh. My ex saw me on Tinder. She was swiping for boys and she sees my pretty face. She read my bio and had some feedback for me. <laughs> Yeah, she told me that I needed to change my Tinder bio because the one I wrote, quote, makes you seem pretty sad and needy. <laughs> Can you believe this woman? Are you see the audacity? Are you you're gonna call me sad and needy? Do you realize how ridiculous that that's like if God, if God came down here and was talking to me and was like, Aaron, your ears are pretty big and goofy. Because, I mean, yeah, that's true, but whose fault is that? Who made me this way, Tabitha? That's on you. In her defense, my bio was pretty sad and needy. Uh, <laughs> that's why you don't get on right away. You wait, or you have a bio that sounds like, hey guys, I'm not here for anything too serious, just someone to hold me while I cry. <laughs> Hit me up. But I just, this is the thing, it's tough to date nowadays. I mean, I went on an app, uh, <laughs> I was being very honest, I would say. Lonely control freak, uh, seeks man a few words uh, for a romantic game assignment says, you know. And um, I wasn't getting very far. It's hard to find a good one, you know? I want a good one. I've waited this long. I, I went out with a guy, halfway through the meal, he turns to me and he goes, that's not your natural color, that's fake. But my hair. I'm like, oh, you got me, I'm busted. My hair color is fake. But you didn't pick up on all those fake laughs earlier, did you? No, you didn't. <laughs> Got you there. Uh, I'm originally from a small town in Michigan called Oscoda. That's the appropriate response. I hadn't heard of it either. Uh, it's, a, it's a really small town. Like the dating app Tinder, Tinder in a small town, is basically the same thing as Ancestry.com. <laughs> Great, got matched with my Uncle Bob again. <laughs> so here's, the, here's what works, internet dating. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, every NFL game I watch, every other commercial is either Viagra or Match.com, and I'm the only guy in here using both? Come on. So, you know, here's the thing. You type out that first essay on, you know, and that's when like, it's like 2.30 in the morning and you're sitting in West New York, New Jersey in your underpants, and that's when you realize my life did not work out the way I expected it to. <laughs> I, mean, I used to drive a Jeep and have abs, and now I need the computer to fall, fall in love. And uh, so then, you know, you write the essay. Did you guys meet online? Oh, okay, sorry, all right. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it in front of 300 people? Anyway, so I, uh, you write the essay and you want to be funny and charming. You want to work in that you like kids, but not in a creepy way. And then at the bottom of the essay, you're like, do I write or best offer? I'm like, no, that's, yeah. Right, it's just like real life, that's implied, you know. And I've been on internet dating, I was an early adopter. I was on internet dating when the internet was a CB radio and every date was at a truck stop. I mean, I've been on it for a while. <laughs> this close to Route 80, I knew you guys would get that. I, uh... <clears throat> so then, you know, here's the problem. You're not lying about yourself, you're just polishing the apple. Like, you're picturing yourself on your very best day ever. I could picture it was like summer 2004, I was at the beach, I was really lean because I'd had diarrhea all week. <laughs> right. I look great. My friends are like, dude, are you working out again? I'm like, what do you mean again? You know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm working out. I'm eating only the right foods now. Just expired dairy products. That's it. I'm like, but get a lot of shots of this because the gut is coming back. I'm going to eat my weight in crab cakes before we leave here. And, 
so that's the guy I'm picturing. But you forget everybody else is doing that. Like, I, I like curvy women. You know, that's one thing you can kind of pick people by body type when you do the internet dating thing. And I like, I like curvy women. <laughs> right, I know. I need a new gesture for this, because this makes me seem like I like snowman women. <laughs> you know, I just love the, the carrot nose, the coal eyes, the little scarf, the way she melts and goes away every April. <laughs> Right, I can, I can fish and play golf all summer and get another snowman woman in November. That's perfect. That might be a weird fetish I didn't realize. You know, I'm into snowman women. Don't tell me about it. I don't want to. And uh, so, like, you could put in, so I like curvy women. And somebody told me, you got to compare yourself to a celebrity. So I described myself. I actually have been with my girlfriend for a while now, but, you know, when we met, Michael Phelps was hot. So I described myself as looking a lot like Michael Phelps. <laughs> right. Thank you for laughing at me on that. <laughs> this guy doesn't look like... I do that 8,000 calorie a day diet thing he does. I just don't do any of the swimming to burn it off. And uh, so we meet, for, we meet for a cup of coffee. I almost said we meet for a drink. We met for a Sprite at a place. <laughs> And uh, she gets out of the car, and for a second, I'm thinking, like, I hope she doesn't think I really look like Michael Phelps. But then I'm looking at her, I'm thinking, she's not so much curvy as she is round. You know? <laughs> curvy means more than one curve, you know? That's why it's not pronounced curve. Exactly. Single people, there's single people here. We're the single people here. Cool. Just gauging my chances. Uh, <laughs> none. <laughs> I've tried all the apps, tried them all. Tried all the apps, Tinder, Bumble, Airbnb. Ah, uh, just <laughs> trying to get something to work, you know what I mean? Had to delete Tinder from my phone. I didn't like it, I didn't want to use it anymore. Swiping all day and just getting addicted to it. I did not like it, I had to delete it from my phone. So now I just do it in real life. Just go up to girls like, nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just tap them twice. Like, show me more outfits. Uh, <laughs> what do you have in a romper? That's my favorite. Can we do a romper? I'm naive. I don't understand the dating. Dating the younger girls can be super awkward. I don't understand some of the things that they say on dates. Went on a date recently, and 10 minutes in, a girl goes, oh, no. I forgot to take a picture of your license plate and text it to my parents. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what do you, what? She goes, oh yeah, you know, just in case I go missing. <laughs> we met through friends, not on Craigslist, right? Like, I work with your mom, Kathy. Like, I don't understand why. Why are you so nervous? She goes, I probably shouldn't have told you this. I was like, no, you gotta tell the guy you're gonna do that, <laughs> right? Because if you don't tell the guy, you're still going missing. <laughs> Take a picture now, text your parents. I don't care. And she goes, are you sure? Isn't this kind of weird and you out? And I was like, nah, this isn't my car. <laughs> you thought I was gonna kidnap you in my car? Oh, no, 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 I'm not an idiot. You're a keeper, get in the trunk. Watch out for the guys clapping. <laughs> it's not. That's my move tonight. All right. Uh. I don't have like a swipeable face. Does that make sense? For like the dating apps, everyone's like, get on Tinder. And I can't, and you know, this isn't, no one ever looks at me and goes, that's what I want, you know? <laughs> Takes lots of convincing. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, screw her. Uh... <laughs> And if you are single for any amount of time, they will start to push, like, have you tried the online dating? Like, I've never heard of those. Is this, like, a new thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard of it. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I don't know when the first time you heard of it, online dating, years ago, 10, 15, whatever it was, it sounded easy. Like, the first time, like, that sounds simple, because I've done online shopping. Uh, <laughs> it turns out it's not the same thing. Um, I figure I'm going to go on, I'm going to click on a couple girls, go to the checkout basket, and then... <laughs> Right? Assuming I had enough, I could save on shipping. But it is way... <laughs> uh... Uh, I 
I just can feel it from you guys. It's great. It's really fun. We'll do a group hug later. It'll be fine. I mean, I won't be a part of it, but you can. And I just sort of don't like touching people. But here's so a lot of you probably got married uh, long ago or whatever, and you may not know about how the online thing dating goes. Here's let me give you a snapshot of what's like uh, generally. It is first you have you have to build a profile, so it's way more work than you think it's going to be. It's like an online class, uh, <laughs> an online creative writing class, and it is. <laughs> A lot of fiction, and so you, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta uh, create, first you gotta come up with some sort of catchy headline. Almost every female writes the similar things. They write, uh, love to laugh. They wanna let you know they like to laugh, which is great. That is great. I just don't know anyone who doesn't love, I mean, who do you know that doesn't love laughing? They're like, oh, I'm not a laughing guy. Come on, that is, ugh, makes me happy on the inside. So, you guys go on ahead. <laughs> I do like to sneeze, though, so if you're going to a sneezing club, let me know. I just... So, okay, the love laugh, great. I'm like, great, I like laughing. I also enjoy breathing. We got a lot in common. You know, there's a, there's a connection here. Occasionally blinking. We've got something to work with. You see, and then they read through this uh, person they're looking for a lot of times, and then someday they say, uh, no egos, guys. I'm looking for a guy with no ego. <laughs> like, uh, it's online dating. Uh, there's no ego at this point. Um... <laughs> You're in luck. <laughs> I did not start here, so... Um, I think about all those old uh, photos I've seen of some guy out in the middle of nowhere, uh, like a pioneer of some sort who's got a wife out by himself. I live in a city of about a million people and I can't find someone to hang out with for the weekend. I'm not coming in all cocky, is what I'm saying. So maybe <laughs> ease up on the ego talk. Uh, then we got the pictures, uh, which of course uh, are all over the place. Have you see, I've seen this sometimes, someday, not even of people, I've seen pictures of like living rooms. I'm not even sure what my reaction is supposed to be. Yeah, I can see myself sitting on that couch. That looks like a pretty good couch. <laughs> a good basis for a relationship is the picture of your cat. A lot of pictures of pets. Again, I'm looking at a picture of your dog going, yeah, I can see myself petting that dog. That seems like a good dog to pet. Let's start there. A lot of times I see this one photo. It's a group photo. I don't even know which girl I'm supposed to be looking at. Uh, never your first choice, I'll tell you that right now. Um, no, not even your second or third. <laughs> Time you figure out that one. Oh, I thought that was a rescue friend. I didn't even know she was part of this. <laughs> oh, sad. You guys feel worse about people in jokes that you've never even, you'll never know than I do about people I care deeply about. Uh, this is amazing, that sort of kindness that you have for fabricated people in a made up joke. Um, incredible. <laughs> All right, so then there's one picture we know. There's one photo, it's tight in on the face, cropped really tight, like, Get, I know face is part of the process, but give me a clue what's outside the crop marks that you don't want me to see. Is it a fin? Is that what's going on? Is that... <laughs> and you think I'm never going to see, are you going to be behind a door our entire lives, just right behind a little cutout? <laughs> give me a clue. It's like, this is my analogy, not a good one, but let's say, <laughs> let's say uh, you're going to buy a car. And you see uh, this great description of the car. All right, that sounds great. And there's a picture, one picture, it's tight in on the front tire. That's it, really cropped, close. <laughs> Like, okay, it's probably not exactly as I've, you've described it. And so uh, you show up and look, I go, wow, that trunk is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought, <laughs> right? Maybe the headlights would match, but I guess, uh, whatever. <laughs> All right, we got through that, everybody. We're fine with that. <laughs> But well, that's cool. Has anyone here ever met on the internet? <laughs> right there, internet, right there? Good, how long, uh, oh, up, oh, in the bad seats, okay. <laughs> they think they're online. <laughs> Screw you, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the website that you hooked up with your man? Neutral. Neutral. <laughs> Isn't that a gas? 
Let me tell you about the internet date. Maybe it worked. Don't break out in the Jerry Springer thing. Relax, folks. Got this. Guys, you think you're hooking up with a hottie on the internet? It's me. I'm lollipop at gmail.com. So I, uh, I, a while back, I tried online dating uh, a number of years ago, uh, and uh, yeah, and I didn't want to, but I, I got lured in by one of those sites, right? I was just kind of investigating, and uh, here's the deal. You gotta fill out a personality profile, which if you're like me, that's a hundred questions you've never thought about in your life. <laughs> you know, you've got me. <laughs> I'm an armchair philosopher. What's more important to you, loyalty or honesty? What is more important to me? Is there money involved? Or... Some of the stuff's easy. You know, what, what's your favorite dessert? I like pie, so I just wrote that pie. Actually, all caps three times. Pie, pie, pie! Because it was the first one I was really confident about the answer. The, uh... hey, but here's the problem with these things. Okay, you're supposed to be honest. Yet, you're trying to get someone to like you, and it's just, it's just counterintuitive for a lot of these questions. Okay, what do you like to do with your leisure time? Are you gonna be honest about that answer, really? I mean, how interesting is your leisure time, really? 99% of your leisure time, really. I mean, what am I supposed to, well, I like to sit on the sofa, look at the cat, uh, say, kitty! a hundred times and then I pick at my heel because the skin builds up on the outside and, uh, sometimes if I'm lucky I actually get a little skin ball roll it up throw it at the cat and whoa, it scares him hey. so that's a good Tuesday night and cat people fleshy feet people both maybe so I, I did what I think most people do. You take everything you've ever done that's interesting, put it into one weekend. <laughs> right, you're ridiculous on the opposite end of the spectrum. Well, I usually wake up and go mountain biking or hiking, and then I hang glide back to my car or <laughs> paraglide, weather permitting. And then I'll hunt and kill my own lunch and uh, dress it in the way of the old pioneers and uh, maybe spend the afternoon doing charity work like building yurts for homeless Mongolians. <laughs> I literally got to the end and I, I <laughs> uh, at the bottom, they said for $30, we'll use all this data and plug it into our system and match you with your dream girl. And that's, to be honest, I, I got more paranoid than anything. Or I, I started to think, really, well, the, the computer knows? What if I've been wrong my whole life, you know? Because I've always kind of had this thing for the sporty librarian type with uh, a foreign accent and a PhD and some rental properties. That's all I'm going for. You know? <laughs> what if that's way off? What if I'm more the Walmart cashier type with a Ford Festiva and a lot of guns in her basement kind of guy? <laughs> Only one way to find out. So I sent the money in. They matched me up with a pediatric anesthesiologist from South Africa. Cha-ching. <laughs> yeah. Best $30 return I've ever had. So I didn't even know what it was when I met her to a pediatric anesthesiologist. Turns out she almost kills children for a living. That's what she told me. She said, well, scientifically, we use drugs and chemicals to shut down your body and hover you over the abyss. Well, and then while well, they do the operation and then you brought back into the world of the living and then stabilized from the massive trauma and prevent you going to shock. Yeah, that's basically what I do, which is going to come in handy when we have to discipline our own kid, I think. <laughs> you better clean your room. Your mother will show you the white light of Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I do what you do now. I'm, uh, I'm online. I'm on uh, all those websites. I'm on Match.com. I'm on PlentyOfFish.com. I'm on ChristianMango.com. I'm on FarmersOnly.com. I do a lot of shows in Nebraska. You never know. Man.
But it's, di it's, it's different. It's funny, man. First of all, that profile thing, you know, uh, it's like filling out a job application. I just don't want you to check my references. <laughs> you know, uh, and ladies are so ingy now. I like hiking and biking and camping and fishing and skiing and snorkeling and horse skating. I don't even know what horse skating <laughs> is. We can't go out. I like eating and sleeping and drinking. Boom. <laughs> One lady put on her profile, she wants a man that makes at least $150,000 a year. That's what she said. I wrote her back. I said, girlfriend, times are hard. I need a man to make $150,000 a year. Get in line. What kind of a uh, crowd do we have? Are we married folks? Married people? Round of applause? Oh. Happily married people. I can't even do a Tinder joke tonight. <laughs> I'll still do it. Um, no, I got off Tinder because I have a girlfriend. That's the rule number one. Classy thing to do. And uh, all the women in LA, they all have the same exact sentence on all their Tinder profiles. They all wrote this sentence. They say this, I'm fluent in sarcasm, hee hee. <laughs> so I'm a comedian. I wrote back to one of the girls like, oh, that's so cool that you're fluent in sarcasm. She was like, really? I was like, no, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Sure you know what fluent means? <laughs> Not sure. My first divorce was in the 90s, like, and that was like right on the cusp of internet dating, right? Internet dating back in the 90s, I was like still considered taboo, right? Like you were desperate if you met somebody online. Like back then, you were more embarrassed to admit that you met somebody online as opposed to meeting them at the family reunion. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Now the dating sites, there's no shame. No shame on any of the dating sites. We freely admit where we meet these people on these freakish dating sites. Like, where'd you guys meet? BadCreditCupid.com. It's great, you download the app, enter your social security number, turn on location settings, then you get a notification with someone with an equally bad credit score checks into a nearby bar or pawn shop. Now, I, I missed out on Tinder. That makes, seems like it makes dating really easy. Are there people on Tinder here in the crowd? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some married guy accidentally says yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I missed out on that, but I have friends who do it, and so I'm always interested to see how it's going for them. I have one friend who never gets any matches. He's like 24 years old, he's a comedian, he's, he looks good, he should be getting tons of matches but uh, he never does. So I'm like, here, let me, let me help you out. I'll be your coach. So I'm looking at his Tinder profile and I go to the settings. And I didn't even know you could do this, but apparently you can set recommended ages for the matches that you want. My friend's 23 years old. He had his recommended ages set at a minimum of 45. <laughs> it's like, hey man, to each his own, you know, I'm not judging. But he also had the maximum distance set at one mile. <laughs> I didn't know mommy issues could be that urgent. <laughs> like, I need to make out with the grandma right now. <laughs> I can't drive two miles. <laughs> doing the online dating. Uh, I mean, I have a friend doing the online dating. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Pictures always from like eight years ago, right? Like this one girl I met up had with like eight lip rings and five nose rings, 16 earrings. She kind of looked like a catch and release trout having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> so I threw her back, yeah, right. like she had swallowed the hook. She had a pierced tongue. And I said, why do you have a pierced tongue? And she said, the thigh, the fact that it looks great. And, uh... I 
met my man online, did the online dating thing. I loved online dating. I thought it was great. I feel judgment. <laughs> I love sitting in my room at night going shopping for a man. Is that not just the best? I love that. It's how I shopped for all of my Christmas presents too. It is so, it's a new thing. It's awesome. So I think that one man wrote a profile and every man has copied that first guy's profile because they're all pretty much the same. I want a woman who can go from evening wear to blue jeans. They all say that. We can change our clothes, guys. I don't know if you knew that, but we can. I want a woman who likes to travel, but I don't want a woman with baggage. I know that's a stupid thing to put together, people, but that's what they say. How can I travel if I don't have baggage? So, I'm really glad I, I got my girlfriend now. She's great. I, I did the dating website thing. I was on Match.com for 30 days, and then the free trial ran out. And uh, <laughs> on Match.com, if you match somebody on a personality trait, you get a green dot, then they get a green dot. That way you know if you see a lot of green dots, you have a lot in common, and maybe you should reach out to the person. So one night, it was very late, I had all these windows open on my computer. I glanced at this one window, it's got 100% green dots, which I'd never seen in all my searches. I was like, oh my goodness, this is it. 100% green dots. This, this is my soulmate. This is the person that's gonna change my life. I got excited. I highlight the window, I scroll up to see the profile picture, and the profile picture was me! Everybody, <laughs> hooray! <laughs> Apparently some point earlier in the evening, I hit the button, view your own profile, and I matched myself perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Smash.com. I'm looking for a relationship online. I can't find anyone. They're too young there on that Tinder. Girls are too, you know, women are too young on Tinder. Can't find a woman on Grindr. I, uh, yeah. I like older women, so I'm on Yonder. That's where I'm at, Yonder, I, uh. And at this age, in your 30s, if you're single, you will do the online dating. We've all done it. I've gone through all of them. I've done Tinder, I've done Bumble, and Ancestry.com, and... <laughs> yeah, the last one was not a dating site. I found that out after I paid. That wasn't cool. <laughs> On these dating profiles, at least for girls, I've seen hiking on every girl's profile. Hiking is all over the place. One girl was even like, I love hiking so much, my perfect first date would be on a hike. Yeah, that's a great place to meet a stranger for the first time, the woods. <laughs> is there a bad cell signal too? Good, I really want this to work out. <laughs> and see, I go to church, and if you're single and you go to church, you hear the dumbest advice ever. It's always, hey, it's okay being single. Being single is a gift from the Lord. I'm like, I don't want it. <laughs> it sucks, give it to Goodwill. <laughs> Can we re-gift it? Because I want to give it to that guy. He's dating the girl I want to date. Give it to him for a second. She's still checking me out. Oh, stop it, stop it, man, stop it. He is so desperate to meet women, he went to online dating. Don't do this. Did you or did you not go to Match.com? I hate you. <laughs> if you're not familiar, how isn't? Who isn't nowadays? But Match.com is an online dating service. It doesn't work. Okay. It might not have worked for you, but it's worked for a million. Did not work. Match.com. It's an online dating site that does not work. Shush. It has worked for many, many people. Did you go to the website? I did. You filled in the form. Yes. You put your name. Romeo. You put your race, mannequin American. <laughs> they got that joke. They're a good crowd. <laughs> Some people don't get that joke. Okay. <laughs> they just sit there. Okay, all right. <laughs> mannequin, that's my major. Okay, okay. <laughs> We're at Match.com, Romeo, Mannequin American. What did you put for occupation? Tyrell Naniac. Looking for a match. Oh, get out of here, get out. <laughs> I got a hundred emails from girls in Wyoming. Okay, okay. 
I love that state. It's a question, Wyoming. <laughs> What's the answer? Idaho. <laughs> All right. I love that with states. What do you mean? Did you know what Tennessee? What did Tennessee? Saw it, Arkansas? Okay, okay. Same thing, Utah. Okay, all right, all right, all right. She wore a New Jersey. All right, man. And speaking of Jersey, that place, I can smell it from here. All right, man, my gosh. We're at match.com, all right? Did they set you up? I didn't like her. You are so judgmental. I didn't like her. Why not? She had tattoos. Oh, for goodness sake. You were, so what? What did the tattoo say? Made in China. Okay, come on. <laughs> did you have any good experiences? I had one. Well, now we're getting somewhere. This is what Match.com is about, to, to match you with people who have, she was awesome. Okay, so you met somebody with soulmates. You made a real connection, like we'd known each other pre-assembly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said, pre-assembly. Okay, all right. So where did you meet this person? In a restaurant. Well, that's nice, this is nice. And did you know her? As soon as she walked in the door. That's nice, buddy, and what did you say to her? Hi, Mom. Oh, come on, man, come on. Raggedy Ann, okay, okay. 